the harmonic oscillator, as represented for example by an oscillating spring, is one of the most important concepts in physics. It describes many phenomena of classical mechanics, electrodynamics and quantum mechanics, and we encounter it frequently in everyday life, for example in the form of water waves, audible sound or molecular vibrations. Basically, an oscillator is a periodic deviation from a rest value. It is harmonic if it can be described by a sine or cosine curve. If a spring is deflected beyond its rest position, a restoring force acts in the direction of the rest position. This force is proportional to the deflection and is described by Hooke's law. In this experiment, the spring constant of a spring is determined once statically and once dynamically. You will need a spring that can be suspended, several weights, a scale, a length scale and a stopwatch. First, we measure the mass of all weights and the spring with a scale. The static method takes advantage of the fact that there is a balance of forces between the weight and the restoring force of the spring. We first measure the extension of the spring without any attached weights. We we'll repeat this three times. In doing so, we should pay attention to what the accuracy of the measurement is and where possible systematic errors can occur. A weight is then attached to the spring and the new extension of the spring is measured three times. This procedure is repeated for a total of four different weights. For the evaluation of the measured values obtained with a static method, the fact that the deflection depends linearly on the spring constant is used. The measured values can therefore be plotted against the mass and the spring constant can be determined from the slope. For the dynamic determination of the spring constant, the spring with the attached mass is deflected and thus set into oscillation. The effective mass of the spring is relevant for the oscillation, which depends on the attached mass and the pure spring mass. The restoring force acts alternately up and down, and the speed of the spring oscillates between zero and a maximum value. In order to determine the spring constant, we take advantage of the fact that the oscillation period depends only on the effective mass of the spring and the spring constant. Now, measure the duration of five oscillations of the spring with a stopwatch yourself. Repeat this three times. We now attach the second weight. Measure five oscillations with this weight, repeating three times. Do the same for the third and the fourth weight. Please note how accurately you can measure and what systematic uncertainties exist. To determine the spring constant, the measured time is plotted against the effective mass and the spring constant is determined from the fitted curve. This experiment illustrates the principle of a simple oscillation and how a material constant can be derived from other measurable quantities. 